After the grid, it's now time to talk about the guides. Guides are horizontal and vertical lines that you can place anywhere on your document that get saved with your document and that serve as a reference. They are useful when it comes to creating flexible grid layouts, like for a web page, for instance. This is something web and graphic designers use a lot. Now, what are they useful for as far as games are concerned? Here is an example. So I have a game mockup, and I want to create some kind of interface for when the player finishes a quest, he has to get some kind of reward. But the trick here is that the player will have to choose between two, three, four rewards, maybe. I'm getting some more graphics in there. I'm going to scale them down with the free transform tool, Control T, and place them in my UI group. Now I'm going to show the grid, and I'll use the grid to create, first of all, some kind of gutter around the sides of the document. So here I'm creating a 128 pixels gutter around the edges of the document. I will use these to basically represent the save frame for the UI. You have to support a variety of screen sizes and screen ratios nowadays, especially with mobile games. To do that, what you do is you create a save frame that you know will work on every single device. That's what I've virtually done in here. Then what I want to do is to use snapping to place the text in the center of the document. We'll talk about snapping in the next video, but that's just so you understand what's happening in here. And then using the grid, I'm going to place my guides right in here, every two major grid lines like this. And I'm using Krita snapping for that. And now I know that in there, I can place three cards like this one. I will move my text a little. It is still kind of centered on the document. And now I can hide the guide and see how this interface will look in the game. And I can always move my group where my cards are properly aligned. And I can use that to get an idea of where I want to place this interface element on the screen. Maybe I don't need the text to be in the safe frame and I only need the cards. And having the cards high up like that, if they are a tiny bit smaller, will allow me to see the characters, for instance. So there you have an example of what the guides are used for. Starting with the default UI, we have to do a few things to work with the guides. First of all, go to Settings, Dockers, and grab the Grid and Guides. Then we have to ensure that Show Guides is checked in that case, otherwise we won't see our guides. And we need another thing, we need to show the rulers. The rulers allow you to track the position of your cursor. You can see values in here in pixels, so they give you an approximate position of your cursor inside of the document. Now, to create a guide, you have to click and drag from one of the rulers. If you drag from the horizontal ruler, you will create a horizontal guide. If you drag from the vertical ruler, you will drag a vertical guide. That's for creating a guide. Now, for editing a guide, you can see that as soon as you hover on a guide, you get that little double arrow icon. If you click and drag, you can then move the guide around the canvas. And to delete a guide, you just have to click and drag it outside of the document. As soon as you release your mouse, the guide will be deleted. This also works on the other sides of the document, by the way. In order to edit the guides, you need to be sure that lock guides is off. If you can't click on them, it means that the guides are locked. Locking the guides is useful when you want to work on your document and to start using also the guides to snap again. So that's it for the guides demo. 
we are going to jump on to the next video where we will talk about combining grid guides and snapping together.